Hey everyone, welcome to Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ted, and today I'm joined by... Nerdarchist Dave. And it's time for us to dive back into deep magic. Today we're discussing blood and doom. Jump down in the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. Get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Know what else you'll find? You'll find the link to blood and doom deep magic. Down in the description. Down in the description. Right. Yeah, so uh, again, we got another one from Drive Through RPG uh, put out by Cobalt Press. And this time we're talking about Blood and Doom. And the, our designer is Chris Harris. Development and editing is Steve Winter. Art director and graphic design is Mark Rattle. Cover art is by Sobroto Bahamek. I'm probably butchering this shit out of that. Sorry, dude. Interior art by Brian Sim, Guido Quip, and also Sobroto Bahamek. As well, and of course, Wolfgang, ba Wolfgang Bauer is our publisher, and because it's Cobo Press, so we're dealing with uh, a little bit bigger than the last one, so like 18 19 pages worth of uh, cool content here on this one. And I think this is the first of all the different deep magics that we reviewed that this one in the product specifically calls out. Like, hey, this is probably designed for your NPCs, your bad guys. Not for your player characters. Yeah, this this is a DM product, uh, and what we get with this product is we get uh, three three new subclasses. You get three new subclasses, a boatload of spells. You get a magic item, and you get a monster. So uh, in this product, the spells only go up to fifth level. There there's a, a decent amount of them. Like we said, three subclasses, as well as a new monster and and a magic item. And a magic item. And the, the magic item in itself is is pretty darn cool because, like, it's specifically linked to the wizard tradition. Uh, so it's the Exanguinating Tomb. Tome. Uh, it's a legendary item, and it comes equipped with, like, all of the, or most of the the wizard spells for, for this. Um, you know, it doesn't possess any power, like, you don't get anything, but it requires attunement, so I, I found that was kind of weird. It's pretty awesome. You know, the tomb is, tome is wrapped in a filthy cover that weeps warm, wet droplets of blood. Although gore flows over the book's pages when opened, the unnerving leakage never obscures the spell's details to those who wish to. It's cool stuff. So, as far as the subclasses, we were, we're not going to go through them the way we have in the past. We're going to just kind of do a... Top-down view and overview. And the very first one we get is the Anti-Paladin, which is uh, the Oath. <laughs> it's funny, it says Sacred Oaths. But the Sacred Oath of the Giving Grave. And it is an Anti-Paladin. It changes a couple of the core abilities to bring it more in line with an Anti-Paladin, what you would expect. Instead of Radiant Damage, you're going to do Necrotic Damage, which are Smites. Uh, who your Smite affects more isn't going to be undead and, and uh, fiends like it was previously. Now it's going to be like Celestials and Good Fae. Good Fae and Good Dragons. Yes. Um, you know, the, the cool O things are you get Conquer Death, Serve Those Who Can Teach, Brook No Opposition, and Honor the Gods of Death. So it's like, all right, I can see where you're going with this. So the idea is, you know, no, no one living thing can make great changes over the course of one mortal lifetime. So you must get the power of death and and beyond to be able to make the great changes that you yourself need to see done. Now, the the oath of the giving spell list is mostly spells from this from this product. You know, you, you get a bunch of cool abilities. Uh, of them, I'm just gonna call out one. Go for it. And that is the Undying Sentinel. 20th <laughs> level. You gain magic resistance. Nice. You have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. In addition, if you are killed, you rise from the grave within 1d4 days as a death knight. Consult your GM for implications. For implementation. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it is pretty awesome. You know, the, the artwork here you know, has a, uh, a nice cool... Uh, I'm guessing that's supposed to be a nightmare there. You know horse that's on fire it's got a wicked lance a you know demon horn helmet totally love the artwork there so you know from there we get into blood magic which 
that is essentially going to be our sorcerer's origin as well as our wizard tradition. So the sorcerer's origin, the seraphage, um, you know, you gain you know control over your blood and eventually others. Um, so you you get to begin making that 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 change quickly. So your blood flow, you can wind up uh, getting resistant to bludgeoning damage at pretty low level. Uh, because you're you're moving blood to cushion the blows, I thought that was a, a pretty interesting uh, concept there. Yeah, I mean it's actually it's a fairly weak ability uh, because it's very specific on how how it's going to be used. But that's kind of made off for later. You're actually going to be able to cut yourself and get sorcery points from it, amongst other abilities as well. So it becomes really potent. I, I absolutely uh, once once you get into the Wizard tradition, um, you know, like the other ones, you have the ability to, you know, to, to, to learn blood magic spells easier, as you would expect. Um, you also get proficiency in the medicine skill, which makes sense. Absolutely, because you're going to be, you're going to be dealing with that. Um, you know, your, your highest level ability is Mire or Quicken Blood. At 14th level, a blood mage can turn other creatures' blood into sludge, or he can thin it once per day. As an action, he can cause a creature that fails a constitution saving throw to become slowed. Alternately, he can cause a creature that fails a constitution saving throw to gain the effects of haste. The target can intentionally fail the saving throw. The duration of either effect is a number of rounds equal to the intelligence modifier. So the, the wizard tradition is kind of interesting in the sense of, one, it is, it is a lot about fueling spells with your blood. But I, I found the really cool thing was them talking about like the progenitor of this tradition being a bit of a bumbler. But like a lot of necromancers and, and others have followed his tradition and it seems like have added to it and made it more effective. So again, like all three of these traditions, or not traditions, but all three of these subclasses, I should say, they're meant really to be used as, as NPCs, as bad guys uh, in, in your game. Although if you're running an evil game or if you don't mind... You know, dealing with the darker elements of a game, you could absolutely add these in. When you're when you're reaching across the battlefield and using your magic might to literally rip the blood out of your enemies, some of your other uh, characters in the party might have a problem with this. Yeah, so it's not quite quite a goodly act. Now, I love these these uh, these deep magics. As a DM, these these things are like, oh, well, these are great, fantastic abilities that I can then add to my monsters because they're here written out for me, and I can just incorporate DCs based on the character. So I, I love getting these things just for just for that aspect. Do you have any favorites? Because I definitely have some I would like to call out. Uh, as far as the class abilities uh the spells i'm looking oh, oh, at oh the, the the spells oh man um blood armor is pretty fun blood armor is absolutely a great one it's um, a bonus action to cast and it lasts an hour but in order to enact the spell you strike a foe with a melee weapon attack and you can immediately cast blood armor as a bonus action the foe you struck must contain blood targets that don't bleed don't satisfy don't satisfy the requirement for blood armor the blood flowing from the foe magically increases to a volume and forms this, a suit of armor around you, granting your armor class 18 plus your dexterity modifier for the spell's duration. Blood armor has no sh uh, strength requirement, doesn't hinder spell casting, and doesn't incur disadvantage on dexterity stealth checks. Uh, if the creature you struck was celestial, uh, blood armor also grants advantage on charisma saving throws. So that that is a that is a nice one. Because it's it's technically better than the full plate, because it's eighteen plus your dex mod. Yeah, it's and good. if you technically are proficient in shield, you could still put that on too. Uh, yeah, you could. Um, so I, I have one spell that I really like, but I I don't I don't know whether there's like a a piece of missing information or whether I'm reading it wrong, and that's exsanguinating cloud. When you cast a spell, a rose colored mist bellows up from the spot you indicate within range. Obscuring sight and draining blood from living creatures. The cloud spreads around corners. It lasts for the duration until strong winds disperse it, ending the spell. It, its area is heavily obscured. The cloud leaches of blood or similar fluid from creatures in the area. It doesn't affect undead or constructs. 
Any creature in the cloud, when it's created or at the start of the turn, takes 6 die 6 necrotic damage and gains 1 level of exhaustion. A successful con save halves the damage and prevents gaining exhaustion. But it doesn't say what the area is. It says one, oh, 100 cast, feet, yeah. Casting time, 1 action, range 100 feet. But I don't see an area. So, I'm, I'm a little perplexed by that one, but... As a DM, spells that have the ability to give exhaustion, I'm all for because it only takes six of those to yeah, put, you, down a, put down a, uh, a PC. I guess I would look at Cloud Killer or something to figure it out, but I think it, it, it's to me it just seems like it was an oversight. So uh, worth mentioning is uh, Sanguine Horror. Only because it lets you conjure uh, conjure a blood elemental, <laughs> and that is that is the new monster that you know appears in this great thing. And like all the other elementals, it's a challenge five. Uh, you know, it's got loads of uh, immunities and resistances, uh, so lot lots of fun there. Uh, I only wish that I had had access to this sooner. You know, much 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 sooner uh, to be able to. Throw creatures like this, and you know, use more of these abilities in my game because you know you guys have been fighting a blood, blood demon. Yeah. So. Uh, you know what? There is one thing, one other spell I think is worth calling out, mm -hmm. and out of the same uh, Provalis is Risen Road. Ah, oh, that is that is a fantastic spell. You it lasts for two to twelve hours, and you can travel up to fifty miles, and basically you create these like roads through this shadow way. And there's always a, there's a, there's a small chance that you could actually encounter roads that are pre-existing, so you could take a road to an unknown place if you if you desire, or you might encounter travelers or monsters along it. But you know, apparently, this is something. There's a sidebar somewhere in here as well, I believe, uh, that this is something specific to the Midgar world. Yes. So there's more in that. Like in that campaign setting book just came out recently. So you'd, you'll be able to look for that. But uh, the idea is just really cool, and it just lets you travel a little bit faster. And while while you're traveling over these 50 miles, you don't have the ability to gain exhaustion. So that, that's, that was something I thought was really cool. So you can travel 50 miles without any real impact on your energy reserve. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, and, you know, if you leave your stuff behind on the road, well, it's, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone, unless there's a, some odd chance... That you happen to go back on the road, but it's not very good at all. All right, so Vomit Tentacles, second level spell. You essentially open your mouth, and this horde of tentacles you know, co comes out long enough that it's going to be able to grapple nearby uh, enemies. Allies, I guess you could, you could as well, if you really wanted to. Um, it, it's, you know, they, they follow typical grapple rules. While you have this spell in effect, you you really can't talk or cast spells that require a verbal uh, component. But it is pretty cool. You can somebody can cut the tentacles and release someone from your from uh, your your vomit tentacles. But you just release more. So there's a for the five rounds that it lasts, which doesn't require concentration. You just have this mouthful of horrid tentacles. Yeah, for a Dark Paladin, using this and combining Smites with it. Because, you know, technically, once it's cast, you don't need to do anything anymore. It's just you can use it against the opponent around. Right. Uh, so you can then take your attacks. And if you have someone grappled, and you've been going wailing on them with advantage and smiting them, that's going to hurt a lot. Yeah, it's there's, there's a lot of really great spells and powers that if you if you want to deal with blood and you want to deal with this the darker aspects, these these are some some good tips, some good good suggestions for you. Uh, you know, I put this one on the list uh, for this week because I'm running a game tonight, and uh, you know, these guys have been fighting blood cultists and what have you. So why not, you know, summon some of these blood powers and use it against them? I honestly, I almost feel like for the price of the art alone. This PDF is worth worth grabbing, because the art is really fantastic, and they do stick a decent amount of it in there. They do, and then you also get all these cool options as well as to interject in your game, whether you're using them, at, you know, from the player side or the GM side. Either way, I think you guys are going to be happy with this one. There are definitely a lot of cool things to put in your game. 
So, uh, you know, head down in the description, you know, head over to Drive Through RPG and get this one and possibly other awesome deep magics. Uh, after you do that, go ahead and click like, share, and subscribe. You can go hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.